Okay, so yes, we are live. Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Welcome back to Pro Talks, another episode wherein I'm back with another amazing Super Pro. I'm your host, uh, Gaurav Tripathi, CEO and co founder of SuperPro.ai. And uh, what we do at Pro Talks, uh, you know by now, we bring amazing uh, professionals from different walks of life. Uh, we call them Super Pros. Uh, the super professionals, the intent is that uh, you get to learn from uh, their journey, from their successes, failures, and uh, <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, whatever more that they share about uh, their experience, their wisdom, their knowledge. Yes, you get to learn. So uh, great. Um, and those who are watching us live, you can ask uh, questions by putting it in the chat box. Those who are watching uh, it later on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, wherever the recorded versions, you can still ask questions by putting it in the comments. Uh, we keep monitoring it. So if you put in there, we will um, route those questions to our guests and uh, we'll come back with an answer. So great. Today, uh, we have uh, another uh, amazing super pro, uh, Shannon Sroor and uh, so I won't be the blocker anymore. Over to you, Shannon, for a, for a quick intro. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you so much for having me and welcome everybody. I'm so glad you all could make it and take the time. Um, I've, it, it's great to be on this particular platform. So thank you, Gaurav and, and Alok for uh, creating this and, and uh, I, I wish you all the success and hope that I can be a part of that. Um, today, uh, I, I wanted to, like you said, I wanted to start with uh, my background. Uh, I, you know, of course, born and raised in the U.S., um, started my journey. I wouldn't say my career. My career has kind of been all over the place. But, um, but my journey started in retail and, uh, and hospitality. And, um, and retail specifically in luxury uh, jewelry, actually jewelry, so luxury item of jewelry. Uh, and um, ironically enough, jewelry in the U.S. is not as integral a part of the culture as it is in India. So, and, and I, think it's, I think it's what, 11% of all the gold in the world is owned by Indian women. God bless the Indian women. Yes. So they're keeping all of that. Uh, anyway, so, um, so you know, you, you have to learn uh, ways of uh, selling this particular luxury item that really nobody needs. There isn't a need for it. There isn't a cultural need for it. So, uh, so through that process, I've worked for Zales, I've worked for Reeds, I've worked for um, Berkshire Hathaway uh, Corporation, which is, uh, uh, there's a small conglomerate called Hellsberg Diamonds. And so we, you know, we, that's where actually my, my facilitation journey started. Um, I ended up selling in that process, in that, in that, uh, you know, in that career there. Um, I sold about nine loose diamonds. And so the company... Wow. Well, yeah, within three months. So I sold all of those and they wanted to know what the secret was. And so I went and, and started facilitating this particular skill for everybody in my region on how to sell loose diamonds. So it was it, that's where it started. And progressively, I've just been able to find opportunities to continue to help people learn and, and gather those uh, skills. And, uh, and then I found myself in, in India, where I had to learn the skill of communicating with people that don't speak English. Uh, so we, I started my, um, my journey in India with, an, with our FMCG, uh, you know, uh, business of uh, producing and processing mangoes. And what a what an interesting journey that's been. I wish I could. I wish I had more time to tell everybody about that. So I was in the distribution uh, side of it, and um, and did all the back end stuff. And so with that, you have employees, 
And so it was very important for me to be able to have people who could help uh, with that, you know, who could, you know, so that I'm not doing all of it myself, obviously, as, as, as you go. Uh, so training them, communicating with them, it was, it was quite a, a, an exciting thing. And then through that process, I joined a BPO, uh, in Hinjiwadi here in, uh, Pune and, um, and started with the American culture, uh, four years ago, started, uh, you know, um, facilitating and, and imparting knowledge about the American culture and how to sell to Americans. And that's blossomed into what is now today uh, Bridges Consultants and Trainers, which is my little baby uh, consulting firm. And uh, I've really enjoyed helping uh, everyone who I come in contact with uh, and all of my clients to build their American uh, marketplace strategy. So, uh, so anyway, so that's been my journey. That's, uh, and that's, that's spanning about 20 years. And so I'm, I'm just so happy to be able to, uh, uh, you know, give that leverage to my clients. So that's where I'm at. Wow. So, uh, if I, if you don't mind, can I engage the, the audience for just a moment? And can I get everybody uh, in the audience to write in the chat box one word that would describe why you're here today? We'd sure. love to oh, see everybody, that. you got the cue. Please write why, <laughs> uh, why are you here in just one word. Would love to hear that. Oh, I'm so excited. Thanks, Vishal. Others, please feel free to write whatever it is. Did we get any? I dropped off there for a moment. Yes, we got one from Vishal. Wonderful. So I don't see any of them, unfortunately, right now because I just dropped off. Wonderful. As you're going, let me know how you, uh, why you're here in, in one word. That would be lovely. And uh, let me know if you're excited. Two thumbs up. All right, actually, I can't see that. So um, in, the, <laughs> in the chat box, if you can put excited, that'd be great. Anyway, uh, so while you guys are doing that, um, uh, so the, the purpose and the reason why uh, you, you invited me on to Pro Talks is to talk about why it is so difficult to learn soft skills. So I thought I'd try to answer that and come up with or, and, and share some solutions uh, as to why it's so difficult and, and how we can overcome that. Would that be all right? Oh, sure. Yes, I was just about to ask that. Yeah, please. OK, so um, so what are soft skills to begin with? What is that? Well, um, the way I define it and the way most folks do is that um, it's a set of skills that enable people to collaborate, sell, build relationships and create better business outcomes for their company, team, career, you know, whatever they're trying to do. It's a very abstract and subjective concept. And that is the crux of the problem. <laughs> it's not a concrete, um, oh, well, it's not a hard skill. It's, it's not something where you can pick up a hammer, it's, it, you know, and, and nail something in. It's, it's, not, um, it's not anything like that. It's not a hard skill. It's a very abstract uh, notion, and it requires you to dig deep and, um, and, and find within yourself things like empathy, confidence, uh, you know, so that it's, those are very, Hey, sorry, Shannon. I have a yeah. very basic question. Yeah, please. A very naive question. I'm not sure if others would have it, but I always wanted to ask this to someone. Why hey. is it called a soft skill? What, what exactly is, is soft about it? Yeah. 
Okay, so a hard skill is is something that's uh, tangible, measurable, and um, it, um, where you actually are doing something. Um, a lot of people uh, equate it with things that you do with your hands, you know, um, motor skills, that kind of thing. Soft skills are are very cognitive, very interpersonal. And so you have to, it, it's like I said, it's very abstract. And so because of that, you have to look inward and build from what you have experienced in your skill set. And, uh, and so that's the difference. That's the main difference. If you were to look it up on Wikipedia, just if, if, that, if that is not uh, adequate here. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, hard versus soft skills. This is Wikipedia. Hard skills include technical or administrative competence. Soft skills are commonly used to refer to the emotional side of human beings in, in opposition to the IQ component related to hard skills. I think that's a little, that's a little dull <laughs> of an explanation, but, but that's, so that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that question. That's very good. Um, anyway, so... Uh, so the, so that's the reason why it's so difficult. Now, because of the abstract, folks come in with a lot of baggage. We all have baggage. And because we all have baggage, there's ego involved. You know, we don't think we need it. And, um, and especially those folks uh, who are running businesses, this might, because it's hard to measure, it's not impossible, but it's hard to measure. Uh, you know, ROI, um, you know, there, there are people running businesses that may not think that this is something that is um, worth the money to train people on. Um, and then those learners also feel, well, what's in it for me, right? So the baggage is there, the attitude is there. Um, of course, what's in it for me, fear of rejection, lack of support, um, it requires, so this is the tough part. It requires practice. Yeah. You have to dive in, right? And you have to kind of do it. Um, and so that's where, uh, you know, as facilitators of these kinds of things, uh, these concepts, we have to draw the learner out and get them to understand that the space that's been created for these types of learnings is safe. And in fact, the space that's created while you're learning this is where you should make most of your mistakes. And uh, so one of the things, if I can go back to earlier, one of the things that helped me the most when I was learning how to sell these loose diamonds, okay, now, no setting, no nothing. You have to, you know, making charges, all that mess is still there. And how do you sell something like that? I mean, you can't even wear it out of the store, <laughs> right? Which is not fun for the ladies. Yeah. So, um, so you have to, um, you have to record yourself. Very literally, what helped me the most was now at the time there were uh, cell phone cameras weren't that great. So we were still using the, you know, tripod and the, you know, I don't even, what are they called nowadays? I don't even know what the, <laughs> the, the independent cameras. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we had those and we were recording ourselves. And then directly after the practicing, we looked and we watched the video and realized where we were going wrong. And within, you know, minutes, you were figuring out how to correct. And by the time you left that particular session, well, you you had a skill that you could use the next day. And I liked that. And I so I've taken that concept as well and added it into uh, everything that everything that I do. Um, so anyway, uh, Let's see what. How else? What else can I do here? So I'm going. I'm sorry. I've got my notes. I want to make sure I get everything. Sure. Um, I, I'll touch upon uh, something you know, which is yeah. we spoke about. I think mm -hmm. 
fear of rejection or lack of support yeah yes so this part what what do you think what what drives it actually what what what's at the root of it you know i mean i have faced it myself yeah when uh, then i had to start uh, in fact the soft skill part you know early on in my career i i never really uh, paid any attention to it but when i realized uh then i was again you know i realized okay now since i am an entrepreneur i have to go out the yeah. public and i have to talk so yes i i face that as well but what do you think it's it's at the root of this fear of rejection uh, uh thing well gaurav what's at the root of any fear let me ask you that what's at the root of any fear everybody type in the chat box what do you think is the root of any fear doesn't matter what it is fear of you know uh, different people fear of you know jumping off a cliff um <laughs> fear of you know what is at the root bungee jumping hang gliding anything risky what or what we perceive as risky what do you think is at the root for me it was you know, for for like when, uh, when i thought like i had to speak publicly and you know being on a stage it was really like a moment like okay uh, if, if i go on that stage i'll die <laughs> <laughs> okay well there you go okay so that's so that's a good point you you thought that the result of you going on stage or even being in this webinar would be the result that you would just crumple up and into a little ball and just never recover the unknown is why we fear right and the thing about it is is that fear of rejection that fear of of not getting that support is why we don't try new things why we don't try new things and and the reality is something completely different and and i can only speak to my experience until you until i put myself out there i didn't gain any confidence at all and i yeah everybody needs that um maybe a little bit of validation even if it's one person this is hey nice job keep it going that's huge that's the only that's it so you keep doing it again and the thing about it is there's going to be people out there that don't like you that's the reality and you're not going to get support and love from everybody yeah <laughs> but you know that it'll come it'll it'll come you know what you need will come you just got to be brave and think of yourself as doing something outside the box a big thing for all facilitators and for all learners is getting out of that comfort zone we all have to do it if we don't do it then nothing happens literally quite literally nothing happens so you know taking the proverbial jump off the cliff is is something that we all need to do even if you know and that's what gains that's how you gain the confidence so anyway so there you go yeah good question thank and you the, the second uh, question is on so which i again uh, i faced it myself like when an early in my life you know the uh, uh, the general feeling is that i don't need it and it's like fine i have my set of friends i have done few things in life you know i've done the same i think okay i'm good at uh, whatever the whatever it is soft skill part yeah i can talk <laughs> right yeah, why why do i need it exactly right um you know uh that's that's an attitude thing as well I, again which is a, an abstract concept but here's the thing nobody is saying that uh, that soft skills somehow replaces your expertise actually it's just the opposite your expertise is the reason you need the soft skills the soft skills wow. now that that's the thing is that that umbrella is, of soft skills is so huge and encompasses so much um one of the major the big things and i've noticed this in india um and the opposite true is is true for the us and i'll explain that i've noticed time and time again that indians um 
have these great expertise. They've really got a niche for things. And they're very intelligent in those niches. Okay? But they can't seem to go from that expertise to be able to make it completely effective information for the client, for the person they're collaborating with. And a lot of the time, if they're trying to collaborate with somebody outside the company, they get intimidated. And this is now this isn't just Indians, this is everybody. Everybody. I don't care who you are, it's everybody. Um so so yeah, that's that so is I'll ask it on a different way. Okay. What happens if I if I don't give a shit to soft skill at all? You know, I decide no, I, I don't need it. Then what happens to me? Um you then you miss out on opportunities. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you miss out on a lot of opportunities because gaining that soft skill of either communication or collaboration or sales or you miss out or, or building rapport or, or relationships, you miss out on the next step that comes. Whereas if you start gaining one by one, listen, this is not something that gets downloaded into your brain and you have it. You have to be aware of the skill. Then you have to start, uh, you have to use it in a safe space, make your mistakes, then correct those mistakes and then use it out in the real world. And you still have to practice that, okay? And then, so um, if you don't do that, then you end up missing on opportunities, not only within your own company, but leadership opportunities, okay. opportunities outside, building relationships inside and outside. And all of that boils down to building that revenue, becoming more valuable to your company. Right. If you if, now, let me ask you this. If you're time and time again showing that you are very good at this one thing, but not effective in communicating, collaborating, building relationships, then how are you helping the business grow? And that's just from a learner's standpoint as a as a company owner, as a business owner, um, as a decision maker, as a, you know, a CEO. If you don't find this valuable, then you're missing out on all of the revenue you could be making because your team is, is lean and mean and ready to, ready to build, yeah. right? So again, those expertise are, are wonderful, but if you have no way of communicating effectively, then it doesn't help your client or 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 your company sure great you know it's like yeah. it's like good, good. Uh, you will probably uh you'll probably have everything in you to uh, build that car uh, but you still won't know how oh. to how to get it going <laughs> absolutely that's a great analogy and that's that's perfect it, yes and the thing about it is is your foundation is solid it's you know and 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 to, to illustrate that a, a client of mine said listen i they my team is not able to speak English very well. Okay. okay. Well, I'll be honest with you. The first thing is I'm American. We don't know English as well as most Indians do. Okay. Yeah, okay. Terrible at it. Okay. So, um, so the British, the, the British English that that most Indians learn. Uh, is much better than mine. So I won't be teaching you English. What I can do and what I will do is prepare you and help you gain those skills so that you're prepared for any conversation, any business situation, finding solutions, collaborating with people, not only inside your own company, but outside as well, right. so that nobody knows anything about what you think your insecurities are no that's a very very important point shannon i think that's really great wherein uh, i think also people perceive soft skills as just being tied to a language like english 
Actually, yeah. so I, I think it's 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 really important to understand. No, no, it's it's not that. Yeah, you're going to learn English. So communication itself and and the overall soft skill is not just about the language. It maybe it's maybe just a part of it, but it's it's much more. It's beyond. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, yes. I mean, gosh, I wish I had the brain to know so many different languages that would help me out so much. I really don't. I tried Spanish. I tried Spanish for five years. Wow. And I've got, I've got Corazon and habla inglés, and you know, so I'm not very good at it. Um, but, uh, but I can teach you intelligibility. So there is such a thing as there's a, such a thing as a neutralizing the accent. Now the only the only problem I have with that is that one shouldn't apologize for their accent. I mean, everybody on this. Call right now yeah. knows that I have a very very deep American accent. I've not been able to get rid of it, and I'm I'm not gonna try to even adopt an Indian accent. It it's in some ways it's very insulting to the people I'm talking to, or talking with, or collaborating with. So I don't want any of my clients or their team members to apologize for their accent. I want them to become intelligible. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, that doesn't mean intelligent. You're already there. It means being able to communicate even with an accent. It's being able to be understood by anybody and everybody. That doesn't mean you adopt some weird, you know, accent or somehow a neutral accent. I can do it. I can teach it. I can get you there if that's what you really want but I'd rather you didn't. There's no reason to apologize for it, right? So, so there you go. So that's what I kind of, I kind so, of. So um, now uh, going a step further. So yes, we have established that uh, uh, we need it and why people need it. Uh, but then you spoke about, uh, uh, okay, uh, it's still, uh, so I let's say I enroll in a program or I sign up with Bridges, but, Sure. How do we really measure progress? Yeah, is there a way to uh, figure it out? Is there a way to really measure, track, and measure and understand? Okay, uh, this is like a before and after. Uh, you know, when I when I didn't have the soft skill and then I had the soft skill. How do you measure it? Believe it or not, there's a lot of different assessments out there that can um, that you can do for free that assess your level of interpersonal skills, which is another nice way of saying soft skills. Okay. So um, I can I can even uh, give you some examples. So one that I really like a lot is 16personalities.com. But there's another one that I also like and use. It's called skillsyouneed.com. In both of, and now 16personalities.com is only about interpersonal skills, and it that's all they do is test on that. And you can get a membership, and, and um, but actually their test and a, a little bit of analysis is free. So definitely go on that website and, and do that. Um, skillsyouneed.com encompasses a lot of the soft skills, and you can take different tests. Uh, there, I think there's one, uh, there's one for interpersonal. I want to say there's one on leadership. There's another one on emotional intelligence. Wow. So you can, you, there's plenty of them. Um, and I like to use one. If I'm going to use, uh, you know, skills you need, then I'll keep that throughout the entire program that I design. If I'm using that, so, so we don't, so how you measure it is through consistency. So if you're going to use one particular uh, assessment, then you use that throughout the entire program up until the end. An example of that, I uh, the first half of this year, I went through a mentorship program with Thrive with uh, mentoring. I started off with my mentor going through 16 personalities. And I was, based on how I answered and my baggage, which is, I mean, everybody, again, you have to remember that you're not a 2D or a 1D figure. You are a living, breathing, all your senses 
person, human being. And so you have to understand that your baggage will affect you, how you were raised, your culture, what you think of yourself, right? Your, your own self image. When you take that test to begin, you will have a certain assessment and all of them are very accurate and kind at the same time. Um, when you go, so when I went through the, after taking that test, I went through the mentorship program. I realized uh, through the program that actually I had all of the necessary instincts and whatever that I needed. I just didn't acknowledge that for myself. So I come out of that six, sorry, that six month program, take the assessment again, and lo and behold, because my confidence was much higher and my self image was there and I let go of some of the baggage, all of a sudden the assessment was very different and I liked that one more. <laughs> that felt like an even more accurate uh, depiction of what I'm looking for and the road I want to be on. Um, so that is the key, is being consistent and, and taking one assessment throughout the entire, uh, you know, program, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And in terms of uh, when we start learning uh, it and whatever program we take and we take the first step, um, you, uh, you touched upon the attitude, yeah, attitude side of things. So uh, coming out of your comfort zone, again, you know, that's something which is easier said than done. How do you how do you do it? How do you really push yourself? Um, so I, I'll speak to my experience, and I'm sure Gaurav, you can speak to yours as well. Uh, because again, when you had you had said that part of your journey was that you didn't think you needed soft skills as a business owner, you thought you had everything you need to run a business and everything. The, the thing we don't realize is that we cannot do anything alone. That right there, when you acknowledged that, that changed your whole attitude, which in turn ch changed all of the decisions that you make. It automatically puts you on a different path. So it's just that one little thing, but we all have to do it ourselves. I can, I can teach empathy. You know, I can, I can facilitate and find ways for you to discover your empathy, but you have to come with a simple, uh, you know, an open mind and you have to be ready to accept that maybe you can do something different that maybe the way you're doing it, although not wrong, might not be the path that you're trying, maybe your, your, your path that you're taking is just adjacent from where you should be if you want those goals to be what they are and accomplish them. So the you're right, attitude means everything. And we have to, we have to look a little deeper and we have to accept that we can't do it alone that we can't do anything alone. We need family support. We need friends. We need we need uh, a network, right? We need um, we need learning. We need learning. If you don't have that, then you're not growing. If you're not accepting that you should be a lifetime learner, then you're not growing. There's just no way that you've learned everything that you need to know. I, I'm sure a lot of you would agree that even in this wonderful platform, there are there are even more things that not only you want to do with it, and you just can't seem to go fast enough, True. right? And uh, and part of knowing how to do those things is getting the knowledge. Um, now you may say, well, what if I don't know what I don't know? Yes. There's that is a strong element in any learning. I don't know what I don't know, but you you start somewhere, 
you change your attitude and then all of a sudden you start noticing all these opportunities and you pick one and you go for it. So I would say that everybody in this call today, they're acknowledging that there may be something that, that I don't know and I'm, I'm adjusting my attitude to be able to accept what I don't know. And I think I've seen it in the, in the chat box a couple of times that, you know, uh, the, the, the learning and the, well, I don't know, somebody is saying laziness is the purpose of life. <laughs> um, I love that. Okay, Michelle, that's really cool. Um, we were told after college that we can just enjoy. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, so the question is, did you go to college for something you love or did you go to college to please your parents? Yeah. So we get stuck in that and, and, and that fear puts us in that box. But the reality is, is that we have to think of ourselves as being able to do something different, no matter what it is. It's okay. You have the, you have the permission if you need it. I know I did. You have the permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. You just have to change that attitude and then seek out those opportunities to further confirm what you need. So anyway, that's a little, you know, I'm off on a tangent. <laughs> Sorry. No, that, that, that makes sense. Uh, uh, so uh, Shannon, um, <clears throat> What was the uh, what was the motivation behind uh, starting Bridges? Yeah. What what made you uh, go for it, or what uh, what was the trigger that okay you decided okay <coughs> I should do this? Um, lovely woman by the name of Vishaka. She's running uh, V Synergize, which is a BPO uh, here in Hinduwadi. She. Um, she saw value in my knowledge of American culture and sales. And God love her, she, um, she took me in and said, this whole place is yours. And I totally wow. took it and I ran and I, be, you know, I, I became the head of the training department and, you know, revamped everything and boiled everything down into these small bites. And then I realized, I think more, more companies are gonna need this. I think more companies are gonna need this. And so because of that, I decided that, and again, I got some training. This is the other thing. I signed up. The, med the, the immediate thing that I did after getting that job is I signed up um, and became a member of SHRM, S-H-R-M, which is an American organization for human resources management. And oh, wow. through that, I got, yeah. So through that, I got a whole bunch of resources to help me build that uh, you know, that, that department, the learning and development department. I also got, uh, some information and I got some training on how to design a learning program. Once I realized that, I, so I've got all these tools and I'm using them for, for this SME, this BPO. Why wouldn't others also want it? Now, here's the thing. I'm sitting there with all of my baggage and saying, no, nobody's going to want it. I'm not that valuable, blah, blah, blah. But then I realized something very important. I saw the need in the people that I was training for them to become comfortable talking with me. And of course, being an American, I'm boisterous. I'm very much out there. Of course, that's part of my personality as well, but I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't leave much off the sleeve. I don't keep my cards <laughs> where I should. I keep everything on my sleeve. And uh, I noticed that people were, were very intimidated to talk to me, and I hated that. I absolutely hated that. 
And so I wanted to make sure that everybody felt comfortable. And so I redesigned the entire program again to incorporate that. And that's, that's when everything took off. It was, it was an absolutely wonderful journey after that. And, wow. and since then, I just decided to build this uh, business of bridges, consultants, and trainers and meet those particular needs, be able to help companies of any size and teams of any size to level the playing field for them, give them that advantage of the American business culture, and that we're really, honestly, all the same. <laughs> all the same. Everything that looks different is only surface. The food actually isn't different, Gaurav. It's not. We all have to be closed, right? So just because, you know, some one woman is in a sari, another one is in a sawar kameez, another one is in a shirt and pants, you're still clothed. <laughs> right? And as far as food is concerned, we all need protein. We all need carbs, we all need sugar, we all need vegetables, we all need, that's it, right? Everybody might be eating slightly different things, but is the, is the nutrition any different? No. Do we all need friendships? Do we all need love? Do we all need compassion? Do we all need understanding? Do we all need empathy? Yes. So if we can build on that, done, bus, it's over. Then the 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 level, the, the playing field is level and you just go, you just run. So I give you the tools to be able to run, basically. So I, I have one one question. So why did you choose to name it Bridges? Oh well, thank you for asking that. <laughs> um because I saw that there was a gap between somebody's niche, somebody's expertise, and the, the outcomes that they want. That gap is there. And so I help them build their own bridge over that gap. So bridges is, is I guess, a metaphor for the tools and the supplies and everything that I give to build your own bridge to your success. So the, the website is build, or sorry, is bridges to a bridge to your success. And that's all it is. It's, it's, it's the finished product is all of the skills that you need in order to get better business outcomes, add value to your career, add value to your skill set. That's it. Wow. No, I really like the name. It's a you know, bridge to your success. You know, it, it says it very clearly, okay, what to expect. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a little long, but it's, <laughs> but it, yeah, it describes how you should feel. You should, at the end, feel like you can be successful because you are. You already are. That's the problem is that everybody thinks either I don't need it or I, I'm not good enough for it or no. No, that's not the case. I also felt that way, and it's only been a year and a half ago that I just decided to be myself. And that will add value to others. And I'm telling you, if you do that, if you just decide to get the skills you need so that you can be yourself, you don't have to be as boisterous as me, please. I'm pretty loud and, and obnoxious. But your own brand of relatability that's it that's all you need so this and uh in bridges uh, do you look at so you spoke about uh business you know that uh, <clears throat> that businesses uh, can use it but what about individuals uh, where are these uh, different programs which are like uh for individuals for businesses how is it yeah, well i uh, i'm all verticals across India. I'm everywhere and anywhere. If you want to uh, approach me um, as an individual, I'm happy to help. 
um, and and uh, we can share links to uh, to Super Pro and and uh, Recruiters um, dot net. I think it's called. Yes. And um, yeah. So um, absolutely, I am open to sharing those insights and give the advantage to whoever is looking for it. I mean, yeah. So how does it work uh, exactly like as an individual if I, uh, let's say, uh, I get connected with you, so I come on Super Pro, I book a call, but then how's the program like? What exactly, or what exactly you do to me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't do anything to you, you poor man. <laughs> um, no. So the, the very first thing is that I, I help you through a needs assessment. Now, this could be anybody who is looking to, uh, you know, as an individual or as a, you know, a decision maker in a company. Um, the first thing we need to do is talk about what you think you need, what your pain points are, what your challenges are, so that we can further assess, analyze, and figure out exactly what you need. And like I said, with that, um, uh, with with my other client who said that no 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 they need to they need you know English skills well come to find out I was actually just they needed to know how to prep for a meeting and they needed those soft skills to be able to again you know communicate confidently and effectively to be able to uh, you know keep clients and uh, and collaborate easier seamlessly so uh so first we have to do an assessment of exactly what you need and based on that either i already have a program or i make one that's custom for you or your team whatever is the excuse me whatever the uh the need is so that's it it's really simple i try not to make it very complicated <laughs> If I make it too complicated, nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, but, but you, um, okay, so you, let's say the needs assessment is done, thing, and then then uh, uh, what happens? So you had uh, spoken about uh, wherein, you know, it will be, there will be a way to measure it, and uh, yeah. you have made it easier to learn, and it will be, uh, you make it relatable. So how does all of it happen? So if you're coming to me, if you approach me, then already I know for a fact that your uh, attitude is right to be able to accept information. But there is an ROI. So you would be investing in your own learning and the outcomes as well. And so you would want to have a measure. So like you said, we measure through assessment. We'll have you take an assessment. I really like 16 personalities um, and, uh, and the other one, skillsyouneed.com. And so you go and take one of those, whichever one <clears throat> that I prescribe. And then, uh, and then we go through, based on that and your needs, we go through and we design, we as in me, I design a program or I pick one from my pre-designed programs that would work for you. And then at the end, there's another assessment. Now, it's very rare that there isn't any change because awareness is, <laughs> is part of the package that you now take with you. So if you get nothing else, you get awareness of what is possible and what you can impart and use but that won't be the case with me i i tend to be very um hands-on and want effectiveness for whoever is investing in their learning with me so at the end we do that and then we assess that we take a look at it and this is the improvements that you've made these are the things that you need to still work on that kind of thing. And then a month from there, after going through the training, doing the a second assessment, the post assessment, a month after training, I come back and I knock on your door quite figuratively. And um, and we we do a quick masterclass on yeah. everything that you've learned. Yeah. 
that fully, yeah so that fully cements everything that you've learned and further builds that confidence that you can do it and that's the whole and, that's the whole program and uh, again you know very like, uh, typical question is like okay i've gone through the program i excelled it and you said oh you are doing great okay but maybe uh, after three months, six months, or a year, right. Right. if I start again, going back to my old ways, or it's like, uh, uh, you know, I, I start losing it. Okay, I was doing good, I learned it, but then again, I'm going back to my old ways and I, I forget it, or how, what, what, do you, uh, what do you see? How do I take care of that? Okay, so one of the things that, or one of the main uh, things to help with, cementing and refreshing one is that that master class but i don't let you go just like that you i will um provide a workbook a reference book is what i like to, to, to wow. call it and so you work through that reference book there are so many different activities that we do you know online there's i know this is going to sound silly but if everybody if anybody has heard of the the um, website kahoot there's lots of that uh it's a gaming uh learning and gaming website really good another one of my tools i also use qr codes that my uh clients can print out and use in their home and scan at any time when they need a refresher but that reference book will always be there. It's, it has everything that you've worked out for yourself. I'm big on self-discovery. If you go to my website, you'll see this uh, Edgar Dale's, uh, you know, pyramid of learning. In that, it shows you how most people learn. And it's not just, you know, a, a, a lecture. It's writing, it's doing, it's role play, it's um, wow. it's gaming. It's you know, there's so many different ways to impart that same knowledge, and we do all of that. We do all of that because how else? I mean, the, the the one thing that I think I've learned in raising my kids in India is that the rote method doesn't work. <laughs> It really doesn't work. So you have to have different ways of learning. And adults, believe it or not, are the same. We get bored. And can you imagine if I didn't make it interesting how you're supposed to learn those soft skills? Of course, it won't be effective. So we do role plays. We do skits. We, we get you to practice it. We record you. We go back and say, okay, this is what you did right. This is what you did wrong. We need to fix that. These are your areas of opportunity. So I've never, you know, going back to even Hellsberg Diamonds, I just didn't have that as a problem where somebody would say, I didn't learn anything. You know, I didn't get anything from this. It wasn't in fact. I just haven't had that problem. And I know that sounds very arrogant, but I just haven't had, I, I haven't had that problem. Uh, the that same client um got done it was three months this program was three months and he wanted me to just impart it uh, sorry the ceo uh manager and all the whole team management team wanted me to impart uh all those soft skills and that's great we did that and we we even got into culture and and all that well wow. but what they were what they were lacking was the collaboration in their own office and here's why it's the silliest damn thing they nobody in this office checked out the website now why uh, yeah so why would you check out the website of the company you work for sure. why would you do that yes. <laughs> you would do that so that you know what the company is what, promising yes. to, the, to the clients yeah. If you don't know, then you think everything is fine. Yes, true. Okay. So the problem is nobody went. So that's the first thing we did, and we realized that all of the promises that were being were 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 displayed on the website were not being delivered at all. 
they were promising less than 20, uh, sorry, less than 24 hours or at 24 hours, we will get, this was a, this is a business analytics company. So their clients were wanting these, this data processed and delivered back to them within 24 hours. Oh. We got it from, by the end, it was at 22, which is fine. We got it down to two, Gaurav. <laughs> two hours. Because everybody knew what their job was. They knew what their objectives were. They knew how to do it. They knew how to communicate. And I mean, that's huge. Do you know how many clients you can satisfy in an entire work day? If you can, if you can process the data and get it back to them in two hours, I mean, we're talking about yeah. Bagot, Triumph, you know, Fossil. These, I mean, these are major companies. I mean, it's huge. Uh, they and the thing about it is, I'm not the hero. The team is the hero. Yes. Because they decided they needed the help. They decided they needed that, uh, you know, information. Uh, and okay, skills. Shannon. So uh, what we are going to do is um, uh, again with today's uh, session only. We are go we are going to experiment. Uh, what we are going okay. to do is we are going to open up uh, a networking room. So uh, those uh, people who are still there, I uh, see, will be able to um, to come on video and interact. Let's see how it goes. Although it's already late. Uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But yes, we'll uh, we'll give. So I'll close this session. I'll give the link in the chat. Yeah, to that networking Great. room and uh, post this. We'll uh, we'll go there. Okay. So Great. here, uh, let me uh, thank you uh, for coming uh, to Pro Talk. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining in. Uh, please wait for the networking room. Don't leave yet. Uh, I'll just give the link in a moment. Uh, and yes. As uh, Shannon mentioned, you can reach out to her on uh, the Super Pro page. Uh, the link will be there in the chat as well as it will be uh, posted wherever uh, this video goes. So, yes, don't worry, you will uh, get the link. Uh, thanks a lot, Sash. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Okay, I'll just close the session and I'll just give the link to the networking room. Uh, this is the networking room. Um, you can uh, exit this. Uh, uh, webinar and just go to that room. I'll join just in a moment. I'll close this and, and come there. Done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.